Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to set up the XEMU emulator on your Mac which allows you to emulate Xbox games. So this video does not condone piracy, it is for educational purposes only. So first of all we need to download a few files. So there's this hard drive file that you'll need, you'll need the BIOS files and this is also another BIOS file. You know, legally I cannot show you where to get hold of these but you know if you just google it. it, it when we open up the emulator, you ask for these files. If you just Google what it says on there, you know it's not hard to find at all. And in general, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I'll be happy to assist with any inquiries that you have. Okay, so you'll need the XEMU emulator, and so if we just go to our web browser, type in XEMU, go to download, scroll down, and click download for macOS. Once you've done that, an optional tool, actually, depending on how you look at it, it's not that optional because a lot of time you will get the files in raw format, is the unarchiver. So you can download this directly from the Mac App Store or from the website. And this allows you to extract files that the built-in extraction utility does not support, like raw files. So this is very useful, and uh, this is just a, a piece of software that I would always have on my Mac anyway. Okay, so once you have those two things, you're also going to need a game. And the game, you don't want it in .iso format. That is not supported. You want it in .xiso format. Just something to bear in mind. Okay, now let's go ahead and install everything. So XEMU, double click this. Okay, here we go. So we have XEMU, drag that onto applications. That's installed now. Next, we need to extract these files. So extract the hard drive file. I'm gonna just move that down here, extract the BIOS. And there's a bunch of you know different files in here from this set you know BIOS. We only want the MCPX, which we'll be using very shortly. Then I have the game. I'll do that in a second. Then you have this complex. This is the main BIOS file. You say this, that's fine. Um, that you know we can still use the file. It works fine. So this is the recommended one, the complex underscore four six two seven version one point zero three for the actual BIOS file. Like I said, it's not hard to find. It you should be able to Google it. And then if we extract the game as well, so that might take a moment. In the meantime. What we're going to do is I'm going to create a folder in my documents under the ROMs folder that I created previously called Xbox. So this is where all my Xbox ROMs will sit to see, you know, a nice way of organizing your Xbox games. If you have an external hard drive and you want to put it on there, great, do that as well. But wherever it is, make sure you organize it in some capacity. Let's see where we are, where we are with this. Okay, um, still extracted. In the meantime, I'm going to create a new file, you know, folder. I'm going to call this system files. In here, I'm going to put all of these as well. So, again, it's just, you know, a great way of saying, okay, this is organized, this is in this one place, because the emulator will actually refer to these files. So, you don't want them on the desktop. This is going to clog it up. Whilst this extracts, let's open up XEMU, so there's a few other things that we need to deal with. So if I go to XEMU, you'll say this, could not verify, not a problem. Go to your system settings. Next, go to privacy and security, scroll to the bottom, and you'll say XEMU was blocked, click open anyway, then open anyway, type in the password that you use for your MacBook, not for your Apple account, and XEMU has now launched. If we go to settings, so these are the files that we'll need. So let's just go ahead and you know select them. So we need the MCPX, so click this button here. And for me, it's in ROMs, Xbox, and it's this MCPX that I need. For flash ROM, which is the BIOS, you'll need this complex file. For the hard disk file, it is this one right here, and the EE 
PROM, we can leave that as is. System memory, leave it as default. The AV pack HDTV, you know, the one I would recommend. Snapshots, we can ignore that. Networking, again, if you want to, uh, you know, simulate a network for some games, feel free to. In audio, you again, you can leave it all as is. Like settings are very minimal. The back end, make sure you have OpenGL selected, internal resolution scale. If you increase this, the the image quality will look better but it will have a negative impact on performance so i recommend doing it at 1x if it runs well on your macbook or your or you know any mac that you have then feel free to increase it after that okay so that's almost extracted now there we go there's my game so it's a dot xi iso dot iso that's the format that you want so i've copied that and i'll have a separate video covering how to convert the games as well so I'm going to go to Documents, ROMs, Xbox, paste it here. Uh, you know what? I will also just do a bit of housekeeping and get rid of it from here. Okay, so now that we've done that, you can enable full screen as well. That can also be enabled from here. Uh, you, you know, you can change the preferred starter window size. Again, most of this stuff can leave as is. Vertical refresh refresh sync or vsync enable this and you know for the ui scale leaves as automatic everything else like put the aspect ratio as default some people will say you know do 16 by 9 but do auto because that will give you the truest image of what the you know original game was again most of this you can, you can leave if you'll skip the xbox animation which we'll see shortly you can as well so if we go to input before we do that to confirm the bios is working we can just click x and let's just close this down reopen it so as you can see we have these buttons and if i open the, the launch is successful this is successful because of the the bios file that we added so to go back to settings go to machine settings and the, okay so now let's set up the controls i'm going to maximize this so you go to whichever port you want you know one two three or four so one to choose the device that you want to emulate xbox controller or xbox controller s and do xbox controller select your input device if you have like an xbox controller connected you know it'll map up you know really well that would be great if not you can use a keyboard so go to keyboard what's annoying is you can't just click let's say y and map it you have to go into like a system file again it's just not the easy, nicest way of doing things but that's what you have to do feel free to add an expansion slot like a memory slot controller vibration that's only useful if you have like a game controller connected that supports vibration if you're using keyboard and mouse you know you're out of luck so to actually set this up what we're going to do you have to this is also another tip close the emulator down do not do these steps where i'm showing you how to set the keyboard up whilst having it open because if you close it down you know, it, it, it won't actually work and then when you close XEMU down it, you know it resets the config to what it was when it first opened and you'll lose all your saves so all your progress so close this down now you want to right click finder go to go to folder and go to users then your username forward slash library forward slash application support and if you want to know your username if you don't know that you can go to new finder window Go to Macintosh, users, and there it is. So I can just go to Fahan for scroll down. Actually, where where was it again? I think I've lost track. So if we go to folder library, ah. so I go to library, application support. In here at the bottom, there'll be a folder for XEMU in there there'll be a xemu.toml so open that just you can open it with a text editor like sublime which is what i would usually use or you can use text edit i'll use that because you know that's what you will definitely have okay so in here is where you actually want to set the keyboard settings so how do you do that so there's a couple of things i'm going to provide a link do, 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 do. 
So I'm going to pro provide a link to this because if you scroll down, it has a little guide on how to do it. And I'll show you, you know, I've got it all set up for you. And what you want to do is get the SDL code. So you can just go to SDL scan codes, open this link. And in here, it will, because it uses SDL as the rendering engine underneath, it'll show you all of the key codes. So for A, it's four, for example, for return, it's 40. So it's this number that you will need. And what you want to do in here, I, I already have, it's literally on different tabs that I've got it all. I have all of the different buttons that you can put. So what you want to do is, first of all, actually, let me open this. You want to copy this, copy that, and you can put it at the bottom right here. Next, below this, you want to put all of these. Actually, you can just put a few of them. You don't have to put all of them. That is totally your choice. But, you know, that's what I would recommend. So these, you know, values that I've said, like A, B, X, Y, left, up, down, right, backspace, return, one, two. These are actually the default values that, you know, it sets. You can't, you know, leave it empty like this. You have to have something assigned to it or just not reassign it like so. But all of the keys are here. Feel free to go over it. So the triggers, you know, left and right. And this guide button is just the guide, not on the Xbox controller, but XEMU like menu essentially. Then you have left and right sticks. The button is the when you press the button in inside or when you press the analog stick in. And then you have obviously you know back, the start, white and black buttons as well. Then you have you know D-pad and your face button. So if you wanted to overwrite this, what you would do, you would go to the scan code and let's say if I wanted to use the key nine for one of them, so 38, and uh, you would type in right here. 38 which will be the key 9 so if I save that so remember this file you only want to edit it when the emulator is closed otherwise you'll reset it so you want to save that and you're good to go another little thing to bear in mind if you're typing these out main you know manually on the website for XEMU here is you know the you know the different keys you know that you have it puts it as uppercase if you put uppercase like uppercase A or uppercase you know, D pad underscore left, it won't work. You need to all be lowercase like what I've done. I'm going to provide all of this in a file and that file will be linked in the, in, in the description. So feel free to check that out and you can just copy and paste it. Now we just close this down. We relaunch XEMU. And it's launching up. If I go to machine settings. And now if I scroll down, I believe it was nine. So I'm pressing nine and it's triggering the key there. Uh, a, I did have a, uh, so. So yeah, all these different keys. There we go. So that is all now working. But yeah, you have to do it in the configuration file. Really, really annoying. So I can close this down. To launch a game, go to machine, go to load disk. And I'm going to load my game. So by default, the game won't start working because you put the disc in. So you have one or two options. You can close the emulator down and open it and you'll start booting it because it's like, oh, there's a disc in there. We can go to machine and click reset. So that will just reboot the emulator or the machine itself. And that is there. And if you want to change the disc and you can change it and click reset or eject the disc as well. And there you go. It is now working. We have XEMU set up on our Mac. Uh, you know, this was the full guide on how to set it up. Like I said, pretty simple. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye.